when does yoga really happen to you lord krishna says not for those who eat too much or who fast a lot how can meditation happen to you yoga happen to you who is a yogi yukta har viharasya yukta cheshtasya karpas not for one who is working like a workaholic he can't relax or not one who is so lazy who keeps lying down the whole day or one who has balance of activity and rest one who has done some activity that's why you know even when the meditation courses are happening there is a little physical activity yoga is also part of physical activity and some seva activity is there there are certain rules that we we have to follow till we only breathe through our nose and we eat through only our mouth so these are physical laws certain laws that we need to honor and the law for yoga is moderation in everything in activity not too much eating or no eating at all people who say i don't eat at all they don't get yoga they can't meditate they can't be established in the self there could be one or two cases here and there in the world that's an exception for the rule but generally you have to have balance in your rest and in your activity in your food habits with a peaceful mind not getting entangled in with anybody any situation any circumstances being a brahmachari brahmachari means one whose mind is not on the small things but in the brahman not sitting and thinking about the lust all the time because when you are too free the mind goes into lust when you are busy the mind doesn't go so much into the lust and take a brahma vrata means for some time okay i want to follow this abstaining for some time saying okay next two months three months one month six months two years six years whatever i abstain from indulgence in pleasures because pleasure means mind going outward our purpose is to take the mind inward so when to take mind inward if you are engaging yourself in pleasure also then there is a conflict how will mind go in you want to put a brake but you are giving accelerator you want to bring the car to a halt but if you are giving gas and putting the brake there will be a conflict when you give the gas that time you give gas when you have to run but when you have to stop that time you just press the brake you can't do both at the same time when you want a car to stop you can't give the gas so when you want to go deep in for a period of time one month two month one week two weeks even five days that's why in the five day silence course we say abstain from all other activity of pleasure and go inward you know afterwards you can do what you want to do you follow your nature but during the when you want the yoga to happen to you at that moment he says put your attention on me manas sanyamya machitto because in your mind there should be only one thing and keep me in your mind in many many different words he says just focus on me machitta mat parayana all these words he says just think about me work for me keep me filled in your mind because whosoever you think that person's consciousness or attention will come into your system if you sit and think about a horrible situation your nervous system undergoes that horrible situation if you think about a bad guy your system starts assuming that bad guy if you think about someone very pleasant happy good loving your system becomes like that because as is the thought so does your consciousness start molding why you shouldn't hate somebody because you you gradually become like that person whom you hate it's not for the other person's sake for your own sake you shouldn't hate someone because when you hate somebody you are all filled with their thought themselves in your mind in your consciousness you know 
So this is the way to find nirvana. Shantim nirvana parama mat samsta madhi gachati. And you attain me. Now don't put your mind on somebody who is doing mistake because then you will be angry at them. But if you just put your mind in with me, then you get the confidence, you get that peaceful state which I am in. Then he says, one who eats too much, or one who doesn't eat at all, and one who sleeps a lot, or doesn't sleep at all, they have no yoga, they can't attain yoga. So, moderation in eating, in activity, in rest, is the rule. Unmindful of little, little, small, small desires that rises in you, letting go of it, keeping this mind in the self, in the being. Then what happens when you put your mind away from the little desires and thought that disturb you? Your mind stays like a like the flame which is not disturbed by the wind, where there is no wind, where the wind is not blowing and the, like the flame is stationary, in the same way your mind remains stationary, focused, like a laser beam. The mind becomes like a laser beam. With that your power of yoga, many abilities will dawn in you. You become more powerful. Even to have the best of enjoyment you need to have merit or the ability and yoga gives you that ability. In that state, the yogi is in all bliss. He enjoys everything he do. He, he loves the state he is in. He is intoxicated, enjoying the bliss of the self. Because joy is the nature of our spirit. He is in touch with the source of happiness, source of joy deep within. You know, nothing comes without a price. To get that source of happiness, you need to pay a little price. You need to make a little effort. And those are the efforts, he is saying, moderation, balance, and restrain from other little, little desires to attain some a big desire. As young people or young adults, you have all gone to schools and colleges. When you were studying in the school and college, it was a really tough time, isn't it? So boring to study those history books and geology and mathematics and trigonometry. And suppose you say, no, I don't want to study, I just want to have good time, spend my time in Wonderland and, you know, fun park. Fun park is good for a moment. But suppose you had taken a stand and not gone to school or studies, or taken all that pain to go and spend five hours or eight hours every day in school, where you would have been? Your student life was not a pleasant life. When it was not all pleasurable. It had a lot of hardship, isn't it? Those hardship gave you comfort later, isn't it? To go to a medical school day and night and by heart all those, memorize all those books was not an easy joke, was not something you enjoy doing. So student life is of hardship. So yoga is also a student life as you begin it. But you don't have to stand on nails or shave your head and <laughs> fast all your life to become a yogi. This is all wrong idea about being a yogi. It said, let go of the small desires. Nispruhaha sarva Unmindful love. Those little distractions. Letting go of those little distractions. Nispruhaha sarva Yukta ityuchyate saddada. You know, small things come and disturb you at the time. Whether yours or someone else. There are three types of desires. One is the actions you do with your own inner, innermost craving. Others, you don't have any idea. But someone else's desires makes you do things. How many of you have experienced this? 
someone else wants something and their desire stirs you and you can't keep quiet, you can't be quiet, you, you are compelled to do the work. And then there are third type of things, you, neither yours nor someone else, but it is just the time makes you do certain things or some past karma, impulses. But when you are a yogi, you have a say over all this. You cross this. That is nirvana, that is freedom. Freedom from karma. Then what happens? Sukha matyantikam yattad buddhi grahya matindriyam. Immense pleasure comes in your life, dawns in your life, which is beyond the senses, but your intellect can grasp it. So much joy, so much pleasure, so much happiness dawns in you. 